Well, I hope you don't mind if I take a taxi. I'd like to stay away from all three of you for a while. <laughs> I can't believe a grown man can be as dumb as Cliff Barnes. I don't know how he manages to feed himself. I don't see how you can live with yourself. Oh, it's not hard. You'll see. Once you give up integrity, the rest is a piece of cake. <laughs> Hello, Pam. Say, weren't you here a couple of months ago? You're not gonna make a habit out of this, are you? You wouldn't recognize oil if it's dripping out of your crankcase. And you can't stand the fact that Barnes Wentworth is gonna be bigger than Ewing ever dreamed of being. Barnes, you're as dumb as your daddy used to be. But no buts, darling. Lucy's gonna be just fine. And it seems to me you might spend a little more time planning that party for Jessica than worrying about your bubble-headed niece. Do you often lurk in doorways listening to conversations? <laughs> How else would I know what's going on around here? You know, it was bad enough when Barnes was yapping at me all the time like a mouse attacking a lion. Isn't she beautiful? Well, huh. it's amazing what a few thousand dollars can do, isn't it? Oh, Jay, I would a terrible thing to say. Really? Well, what's next? Are we going to cap her teeth? There's nothing wrong with my teeth. Oh, I guess not. You're sure taking a big enough bite out of the Ewing apple. You know, I didn't ask for any of this. You know, you're really something. No wonder my daddy didn't want to have anything to do with you. Well, it's a shame you're not more like him. All right, now, there's another thing, too. Mark Grayson's will hasn't been probated yet. And when it is, Pam could come into a substantial fortune, which she'd add to the fortune she got when her mama died. I tell you, that woman has a knack for piling up unearned dollars. And you have a wonderfully crude way of putting things. Uh, by the way, who is that young man that's dancing with Lucy? I don't know. She didn't introduce him to me. As long as he's not a Barnes, that's all I care about. But we've got to find that girl if Bobby doesn't marry Jenna. I guarantee you that Barnes woman is going to be right back in this house. And besides, she's an outsider. And Lord knows we don't need any more of those around this house. Clayton. You're married to my mother. You're her husband, that's all. You're not a Ewing. What goes on between Ewings is none of your damn business. Now that she's not living here, what's she got to lose by using it? That document is as phony as a $7 bill. Is it? Mm-hmm. You filthy snake. I take it this is not a social visit? Why? Just tell me why. I was out of your life, out of your family's life, off your precious South Fork. Why would you pull such a ghoulish trick on me? Do you really need to hurt me that much? What are you talking about? You're babbling like a lunatic. You know what I'm talking about. The trip to San Serrano, the trip to Jamaica. Well, I tell you, it's nothing like the smell of money to get the relatives out of the woodwork. Well, while you were out seeking help for your psyche and boosting the economy of the more fashionable boutiques of Dallas, your son was being rushed into surgery. My God, what happened? What happened was his mother wasn't around. She didn't think it was necessary that he see a doctor. Well, maybe that gives you an idea of the kind of woman I married. When she's feeling bad, she starts sucking on that bottle. Of course, you didn't know. How could you have known? You were too busy rolling around in bed with that saddle tramp. You started her drinking again. Hell, all you have to do is say hello to her to get her started. I'm sorry, I, uh, I guess I'm not very hungry. Please excuse me. Well, I guess you're it. A little short on cash since you bought Pam out, JR? Ray, I stopped trying to explain the oil business to farmers a long time ago. But I think you better go back to your table before Harriet's trainer finds that he's not in his cage. 